So, so three people gazing at the horizon? Yeah, the, the moon. ocean and the horizon. Yeah. The important part is there, there were three of them. I searched the word three, <laughs> and you got what you get. All right, all right. They'll, they'll play a game afterwards once the sun sets. Right. Hey, folks, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Z Garcia. You should come to Dice Tower West. Mm -hmm. I will. Dice Tower West, we can play many three-player games there, or four or whatever. No, 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 come on, three. Okay, three, three at Dice Tower West. Let me tell you this, folks. I personally think three players is the best number for gaming, period. If I could have the perfect number of people to game, I think it's three. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who are the three? Well, well, that's a different top ten list. <laughs> that's coming, coming soon. <laughs> no, but I mean, there's something to be said for three people. I mean, four is, don't get me wrong, two, four, whatever. But three, you could, there's a, so many games that work really well at three, I think. Yeah, I mean, th this list was interesting to like kind of make games that really stand out at three because I think three tends to work very well. Sure. Your game's too long at four, chop one down, right? Um, but I also play, I've historically played a lot of games with Wendy, just two player, and so there's a lot that work at three that also work <coughs> at two, so I was trying to really like find like what stands out the best at three. Yeah, several of my picks have a little, um, I think, excel at three because of some nitpicky thing at two or at four. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that when it comes up, but yeah, I agree with you, Tom. I think three is the perfect amount for having your turn come around quickly enough, but having enough interaction, enough points of pressure, dealing with somebody who is seeming to, you know, doing very well. I think three's perfect. I do. Yeah, I mean, obviously people in the chat are like, well, this game doesn't work at three. Well, no kidding. I mean, we understand that. I'm, there's lots of games that don't work at two. I there's think every game work works at, at three. <laughs> <laughs> T for two. Solitaire for two. For th three. You team <laughs> up, okay? Every game works at three. <laughs> Z plays solo games at three. There's, there's three people sitting there. I'm going to do this. No. Okay. Yeah. It gets interesting. Although some cooperative games do. I think co-ops run like best that. at three dummy hands. I do. Generally. A lot of, yeah, if they're yeah. not too complicated. I'm telling you guys, by the end of today's uh, topic, you will be convinced, not only that three players is the best number, but that every <laughs> game works at three. <laughs> okay, well, also I want to be clear, this list is not games that are three player only. There is a handful of those games in existence. Mm -hmm. Martin Wallace has designed one, I don't remember what it was. It's, there's, there's a few of them that exist. And there's that, one I can think of. From Victory Point Games called Trieste. Yes. Okay. For three only. Very interesting card game. Three Kingdom Redux I've not tried. Not a single one of these games has made my list, but not because yeah. I'm against them. I just pick games that I have three players. These are games I think these are really good for us. And yes, I'm cognizant of the fact that I might rather play it two players. Or maybe I like playing two players as much. So I'm going to think of a game. A good example is Lahav. I love Lahav. The Harvard. At three. Great game. Really great with three. But I also love it as much at two. Mm. So I didn't put it on my list because I like it as much as both of them. There's some that I don't mind playing with the other player Oof. counts, but three is kind of a sweet spot. Well, sure. For three reasons. is a sweet yeah. spot for these for me. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I got a couple that I would say don't follow that rule, but whatever. Well, it, it, again, it's kind of how I... I mean, look, is... several of these don't even say three on the box. <laughs> It's a four to six player game, so he's like, well, we'll see about that. It's great. <laughs> Every three. game works at three. Thank you. <laughs> that's our, that's our, his new t-shirt. Every game works at three. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Let's get started. All right. My number 10 is a game that does have a number on its title. It's not three, it's 12. It's called 12 Chip Trick. This is a little trick-taking game that uses these poker chips uh, that are different colors and it does it for a reason. So the red chips, are, or the blue chips are one, two, and three, or uh, 10, 11, 12. The red chips are in between. So when you're holding them in your hand, you can see what color chips the other players are holding. 
you hold four of them at a time. Therefore, three players is perfect for this. Are you are you, are these are you holding these in set of cards in lieu of cards? In lieu of cards, yes. Okay. Uh, and so the the fact that they're chips is a little bit of a gimmick, but it is just like a luxury gimmick. But it's otherwise mm. a very simple little game where you want to have the highest number out there, and then you can take one of the chips and, and put it in front of you for scoring. Uh, but if there's a red chip, you have to take that one first. At the end of the round, you're trying to have uh, in front of you and or in your hand uh, closest to 21 without going over. Very simple, very, very simple little game uh, that I, I enjoy a lot. And it has a good two-player variant, but you have a little dummy hand that you're throwing a chip in Ooh. randomly. You can play with four players. The game comes with four extra chips because you have to have extra chips. At that point, it's 16-chip trick. That's crap. Everybody knows 16-chip <laughs> trick is a garbage game. Wait, so the game's called 12-chip trick, but there's not 12 chips. It actually comes Solitaire under... for two! I know. Well, it comes under the insert, right? So the insert has, like, this nice little area to hold the 12 chips. You're kidding me. And then you know, there's a little flap underneath, like, if you want to play four players. <laughs> They're hiding their shame. <laughs> oh. What so, a roller coaster this is. Absolutely. So yeah, three players, perfect. And if I want to play a nice little card game, a little chip game like this, I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Three people, let's go. I don't want 16 chips. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right, my number 10 um, is a great two-player game also, but I think it's wonderful, and the, the worker placement works excellently at three players, and that is Everdell. With Everdell, you are going to have a little more competition for the locations on the board, and you have one more spot at which to deploy workers, because you put out these little cards that give you different worker placement locations um, that change from game to game. With only two people, you only put out two of them, and then you add a third one for three. Now, the reason I'm saying three is with four, yeah, you have more worker placement stuff, but you're going to have serious downtime with mm. four. People are thinking a lot, they're trying to look for combos a lot, so it's going to be slower. Whereas at three, I get time to think, and by the time I'm kind of ready to go, it is my turn. Uh, really like it at three, great game, Everdell. Yeah, no, no disagreement. Yeah, right? no, I, yeah. I want to fight, but, but <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah, having a little more variety compared to two players, not as much downtime. Like, that's that's... That's exactly why three players work so well, yeah. you know, uh, typically. All right, my number 10 is from Bezier Games. Now, that should narrow it down some, right? Werewolf works perfect at three. <laughs> Werewolf at three. Where? No, 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 no. Uh, bigger than that. This is Suburbia, actually. I hmm. like Suburbia. You do not like it, but I like Suburbia. Um, I like Castles probably a little bit better. I don't think I've ever played Suburbia. I just don't have any interest in playing. Ah, okay. Yeah. Mm. I think Suburbia is fire at three. So this game is about building a city. You are drafting tiles from a line of tiles that come and put them in your city and you get points and you know various things based on how you place them. But you also get stuff based on other people's cities. Okay. Oh, if okay. I open up a restaurant in my city, that's going to make the restaurants in your city not as useful. But on the flip side, if I have an airport and you have an airport, then they're both going to go up. Well, minor things like that. Okay. And that means it's better with more players than just two, right? Because there's more things to build off and affect other people's cities. But not too much where I'm like, ah, I'm looking around. I don't know. That, that three-person thing works really well. I like, oddly enough, city building games with three people works for me. We played My City with three. That was great. You know? Yeah. Um, I admit, uh, the, the, the Quadropolis is good with three. Anything that you need to kind of keep track of what people are doing works fantastically at three. Right. That's true, yeah. But also, I want more than just one opponent. I agree. Because I'm going to decimate them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I need to spread the hate. Oh, I did say fire. Roy's been affecting me. All right. Or who says that? Oh, you say, you say things are fire. You look like fire today. <laughs> Is I don't it think that's how the kids say Is it. Is that a trash dumpster fire? No, I never said the word dumpster. All right. Trash fire. Anyway, my number 10 is Suburbia. All right. <clears throat> my number 9 is Funky Fresh. Um, 
It is funky actually fresh. It's All actually right. very. It's a funky game, and it's the possibly the newest on my list. Wait, Twelve Trip Trick came out like two months ago. It's newer than that. I don't know. Maybe uh, this is from your favorite designer, John D. Clare, called Empire Zend. Uh, you are cult of the new on this list. Wow. So far, you're going to not say that as soon as I say my next pick. No, but you do not know what I will say. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, I mean, you I wouldn't expect you to say suburbia. Okay. No, uh, my, so Empire's End here is a city destruction game, so you like it at three. Uh, it has lots of fire. And uh, it, so basically, you are, you're kind of playing a no thanks reverse auction. Right, everyone has the same city layout in front of them. Okay. Hey, the uh, this round, the number six spot is going to go up in flames for one player, and everyone else is kind of bidding resources to say, no, not my city. And then so everyone keeps going around until some point you say, I'll wreck my number six location. I'll just take this huge pool of resources for it. The reason I think this works so well at three is one, kind of being able to track everyone's information and stuff. It's easier at three than four. Uh, there's enough people throwing resources into the pool to make it juicy, uh, and when sometimes a player will take it right before you're about to take it. Sure. That is such a great moment. But in four players, you, for the second half of the game, always have these double disasters. Two locations are going to go up in flames. I really like the tension at three, where sometimes there's two disasters at once, sometimes there's a single one. You get a little more feeling of reprieve in a three-player game than a four. So I think it just... It works well, three or four, but I think three is that really sweet spot for this one. Huh. I was very happy with it at four. Mm-hmm. Mm. Four okay. is a sweet spot. <laughs> All games are best at four. I think that's what I'm learning from no, this No, 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 no. All games work with three, is what I said. But they're best with six. <laughs> <laughs> All games. Two games put together. Yeah. So anyway, I really like this one. I have Three. not played. This Empire sounds interesting. I did not realize the mechanism was a no thanks mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Okay. But it's a weird one because sometimes you that disaster, you're like, I'll take it. Because sometimes a disaster helps you a little bit, as odd as that is. Okay. It's kind of it does the uh, space space upgrade. So you you destroy something. But then on the bottom of the card, that disaster card, when you take it, you get to slot it somewhere else. Oh. And now this now this slot's better. Oh, hello. I need to try this. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. even like thematically say that, like, the, the city burned down. More malaria for farming. Back <laughs> okay. All right. Your That's insurance good. paid off. <laughs> Got it. All right. Yeah, you know how that works. 100% I do. <laughs> try to find me, IRS. <laughs> uh. <laughs> My they can track us. We're on, we're live. They don't have access to the internet. No one watches. The we're, like in a, we're in a cave somewhere in Florida. <laughs> it's very very flooded cave. It's called a pool. Yeah, <laughs> a covered pool. There is a cave around here somewhere. I was reading about it, but anyway. Really? I is it filled remember. with gators? Probably. Probably. My number nine is going to be Cascadia. Uh, the main reason being, the I like the way that the competition works at three. If you play with more, then uh, I feel like I, I get to do less. I get to make, you know, and, and it takes a little bit longer, actually, too. And this is a game that I think excels when I play it and I pull it off in a convention because it is so punchy. And the return for the amount of time invested, especially at three, I think is great. I feel like I had a... A big meal of a game, but I did it in about 30 minutes or so. And at three versus two, <coughs> the competition for like land masses, the competition for all that stuff is a little bit better. You know, you have to fight a little harder to get the the bonus for having the biggest of this, the biggest of that, whatever. So I think it works really well at three. I like it uh, at that player count the best, <laughs> I would say. And while this is not one that I'll pass playing at any other player count. Three is really the sweet spot, in my opinion. That's that's definitely one of my go-tos at that player count. Though every game works at three, so <laughs> it's really kind of a moot point. Uh, the thing about games like this is you want a little churn in that market. Right? In a two-player game, a lot of times something just kind of won't leave or won't mm -hmm. go away. and so. But at four, sometimes it comes back to your turn, and you're like, well, I couldn't plan for anything anyway. So yeah, three is a good count for that. And just anything that has any kind of I need to have more than my opponent type, mm -hmm. you know, area control sort of mechanisms, majority mechanisms, I think tend to work really well at three. You know, especially because at four, those games can sometimes be unwieldy. And you feel shut out, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're like, oh, I don't score this thing at all. At three, you probably, 
get the the pity bonus at, at least. It's like eight points and and uh, you know four and one. I'm like yeah, okay, I'm I'm still in it. If I, even if I get the one, <laughs> pity bonus is my middle name. Yeah, that's two names. <clears throat> some some middle names are two. You wouldn't know. All right, my number nine. Too soon. <laughs> I will only play at three. Really. Well, okay, I guess I would play it at two, but it's it's best at three by That's far. Liar. On the underground. On the underground Ooh, is the bomb. That's a good pick. This is... Tom. Oh <laughs> man, that pick is I believe straight fire. On oh, the bomb. Uh, on the underground. Well, there's like two versions of it now, and I think there's a third one coming out. Um, uh, you have these subway lines, and depending on how many number of players are playing, is the number of subway lines that you get. Right. So you get three in a three-player game. If you're playing a four-player game, you get two, which isn't as interesting, and so on and so forth. I like this game. I like the idea of building the subway lines and then building them in such a way that the subway passenger, there's one guy who's driving over to city. He's probably an IRS looking for Z. Um, he never has found you. That's like the other game is like nothing. <laughs> they send them uh, a long way. <laughs> Well, that's yeah, it's because he just refuses to get off the subway lines. I know. Um, but I like that concept. Very logic, but a lot of fun. This was a very enjoyable game for me on the underground. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, continuing my trend of uh, Cult of the New. This is a game that came out, I think, in 1997. Uh, I would call this, and no one else would, Andreas Seyfarth's best design, Manhattan. This is a game really? that I really, really like. Um, I like to be controversial. Throw some hot sauce in that microphone. Why do you think it's best at three? Why do you think it's better than his other good games? <laughs> <gasps> you don't like this game? I love Manhattan. Manhattan is one of the, my favorite boroughs in New York. No, the joke is that I don't really like Puerto Rico that much. I think that's... It's a good No one game. laughed. That's a terrible joke. Right. Do you like San Juan? I do enjoy San Juan a what lot. What about his yeah. other games? <laughs> like Manhattan? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Manhattan's great. I I can't I can't really put a reason as to why when I have three players, like it's me and two people who have not played this one, I really like teaching it. Okay. Uh, at four players it's good, but there is a lot more chaos and people can get shut out more. Uh, kind of like you were talking about, I think, with Cascadia, right? Because this is a game about majorities. Right. You want to have the tallest tower or the most in each borough or district or just a lot of towers visible. And with four players, people can kind of get ganged up on more. Right. I think with three, there's that very natural balance of, yeah, Z and I are working together to shut down Tom. And Tom's, ha, 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 you didn't score that many points this round. But now you two are going to collude against me. Because, right. you know what I mean? So it's just this very natural kind of boundary shifting with it. I find it works really well with, with three players. You play different number of rounds based on player count as well. Three just kind of is a sweet spot for me. Yes. Yeah, with four players you play more rounds, putting out fewer buildings each turn, or each round. And so it has a huh. weird scaling thing to it that I just happen to really like the scaling so I wonder if I've players. ever played this without four. By the way, this is still Cult of the New because they just had a reprint of it, which is the cover you're showing. That's so right, okay. New. Next time you want to come, come correct yeah. with that old Manhattan. Yeah, this, this brand new reprint that happened like six years ago. Was that six years ago? It's been a long Cult of the new. time. <laughs> I agree. Anything uh, earlier than 2005 is basically new. Do you agree with that? <laughs> no, I will not agree with your erroneous logic. No, newer. What was it? Is it earlier? Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know, it's, it's, uh, forget it. My number eight is a game I like to call Parks. <laughs> <laughs> Other uh, people call it Puerto Rico. <laughs> um, I'm confused. Parks is the name of the game. That's what I like to call it. No, I'm just confused why. I mean, I don't, know I don't like Chris laugh. Laughing. Joey's laughing because he just laughs. He laughs at everything. But I don't know why Chris is laughing either. Um, anyway, this is a wonderful game, and I really like the... Again, it's a, it's a balance between getting in each other's way and, come on, you went to the spot I wanted to go to, on the one end, and on the other, it being too loosey goosey and like, oh, you never really affect me. If I want to go to a spot, I can pretty much flip over my campfire and go to it and whatever. You know what I mean? You don't have that tension 
of traveling down from the trailhead to the end of the trail. Uh, at three, I think there's enough bothering each other. The, tur the turn angst hits a sweet spot where it's not so much where I feel like, man, I'm not getting enough done. I feel... I feel like I'm falling behind, or you keep annoying me by getting in my way, or what have you. Um, and I really like it at three. It's just a good balance of all those things, you know? I get to develop my own thing. I get to, yeah, you know, kind of elbow people out of my way a little bit, but it's not enough to be frustrating. Uh, and this game, any game that has that ratchet mechanism, I guess, or whatever we call it, the one-way street mechanism, any game that has that can be frustrating. It, can, it has the potential for people to keep taking what you want and you, you keep going, all right, I guess I'm not doing that again, you know? Mm. And, you know, and so I like it. And this one, I, I think at three, it really works pretty well. Um, yeah, my number eight, Parks. Gorgeous game, too. Doesn't hurt. All right, my number eight. This is a great game. It is The Bee's Knees. Jeez. This is, well, actually, I said great already. The Great Wall from... Uh, Awaken Rounds. Awaken Rounds. Oh! Because this game is awesome. Okay. This game is also big and grandiose and takes a while to play. It is a worker placement game, sort of semi co op theme where you're all defending the wall, and if the wall gets broken through, you know, you're going to all lose points. But if you stop it, then you get points based on the troops you put on the wall. Is this co op? No, but like the theme is co op. Like, we're all protecting the wall, but if the wall, if you do fight them off, then everyone gets points based on what they put on the wall. Got it. Um,. Yeah, I'm really glad. You know, for China's sake, it's a good thing the way this game plays is not the way it works. Or their wall would have been gone a long time ago. Because when I play with people, I'm like, "Hey, build the wall, make me," you know. But there's that, and also, hopefully, the wall wasn't being built like actively during <laughs> yeah. monster attacks. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't know that movie. Um, that documentary, you mean? That that documentary, The Great Wall, with Matt Dillon in it. Matt, Matt Dillon. Dillon. Yes. <laughs> so I guess I missed that one. <laughs> Excuse me, I could imagine a movie with Matt Dillon hitting like uh, bar bargain bins at Walmart around that time <laughs> called the, the Greatest Wall the or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I haven't Oof. seen Matt Dillon in a movie in ages. Is he dead? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, The Great Wall. I really like this game. There's a lot going on in it, but there's two. it's too much and too long at four. With mm. two, it doesn't work very well. There's just it, It's a good three-player game. But it's a big, chunky one, and I tried to have a, a mix of that sort of thing on my list. They're not all chunky, and they're not all, you know, chunky. Garcia games. Chunky. You're not saying chunky. You know what I mean? You're saying chunky. Yeah, That's how people pronounce it these it. days. You know, chunky. That's fire. Like, if you see a fat cat, you say, that cat's chonky. He's a chonky cat. Yeah, yeah. He's a if you see a fat man. cat, you're like, go back to the 1940s, you Republican rich person. Anywho. <laughs> Chris is on fire. The Great game. Wall. Really fantastic wall, game. It's a big, it's a big giant bit. game, I like but I think it works fantastically with three. Okay. The Mongols. <laughs> the Great Wall is too long. The Mongols. <laughs> Chad has been just it's pretty good. I like that. It's so topical. Chad has been going ridiculous talking about the snake caves in Florida and just they probably have gator and snake caves or something, yeah. yeah. I don't think gators would go in a cave actually. Why? They can't turn around. <laughs> That's so dumb. They can't swim backwards. Everyone knows that. Nature Channel taught me that. My number <laughs> 7 uh is <clears throat> chunky. Um oh, this man, is I like that. I like that. This is a Vitala Serta game. Many Ooh. heavy Euro games work very well at three. Called of the new. This one is called Escape Plan. Okay. That's Slightly very new. new. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty new. That's one of his newer ones, right? I expect uh, the, the, I played that the, uh, the one with the Azulejos or older. I think it was either 18 or 19 that, that came out. Yeah. I think so, yeah. This one is great because you are trying to escape from the police at the... Uh, you've already done a successful big raid. You should play this game for research purposes. That's true. Keep telling me about this. Yeah, so you're trying to okay, avoid so you're trying the to escape from the povo. Uh -huh. Yeah. At the end of three days, you need to try to escape the uh, the correct exit that's not getting locked off. Oh. But over the course of the game, each player is contributing to build out the map more. I have played this all the way up to five players. I've played it with two players. It all works. Mm -hmm. But three for me is just such a sweet spot where there's enough 
uh, players, you know, there's enough players moving around. You, know, um, you kind of reveal where different businesses are, go are, are around on the map. It's like you're discovering it, even though you sh have already hidden your, way, your money away there, because you need to go to these different businesses in order to collect your money before you escape. Sounds flimsy, thematically. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the, the main accusation against uh, Lacerda Euro Games. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm childish. Go ahead. <laughs> but, I, yeah, I think three players balance it really well, where players are trying to um, do sorry. things in their own best interest. Uh. That with five players, you know, things get revealed and you're just like, ah, I'll never get there. But three keeps it good and tight, but still with enough tension uh, of separate interests. Yeah, I really like this one. All right, let's see if we can bring Tom <laughs> from the edge here. Help me. Oh, you child. Okay, my number seven is... Um, Wow. Is kind of what I was referring to at the beginning when we were talking about uh, you know playing a game solitaire but running three characters in it. Um, I think this is the one that I do it in the most. I, I and this is Marvel United. Marvel United I think works best at three. I love the way that um, your turns starts. come back around quickly, and then it has that at the beginning of most games, most most ways in which you play, you sort of go. One, two, three, baddie. One, two, three, baddie. And then when the baddie speeds up, then that kind of gets gets funky. And so it's one, two, baddie. One, two, baddie. You know what I mean? Sure. I love that cadence. <laughs> I love that it, it speeds up in the game. You can feel that because this very natural rhythm gets thrown off. Um, and it works tremendously well, like I said, with uh, uh, just doing it yourself, playing three-handed solo as well. Um, not a whole lot else to do. You can certainly play with more. You can play with two also, and, and that's all right. But it feels real good at three. Uh, it just it just seems right at three. So Z's three favorite people to play with are three of himself. 100%. If I had that choice, I would. I've play. often wondered if I would get along with a twin. Oh, I don't think so. I think so. I, I think you wouldn't. I mean, he, I would want him to Why? be slightly well. stupider than me. <laughs> And that's why you wouldn't. I know. <laughs> why would you want your twin to be dumber than you? So I could be the boss. You want to boss your twin? You're a 47-year-old man. <laughs> well, I've thought about this for 46 years. My name means twin. When you that's were, why I thought about it, actually. When you're a one-year-old, like, if only there were a smaller, Tom dumber me. Tom means twin, yes. In what language? Yeah, you're the stupider one of the two, okay? <laughs> to break it to you. <laughs> I always wonder, like, I still to this day, I like, wonder if my parents might be Tom. And my, my parents were like big into meetings and names and stuff, too. And I'm like, was was there another one? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. So, anyway, uh, my number seven is a radical game. Oh, we're going to keep doing this. All right. It is a, it is a game that when they, re, they just reprinted it a few years ago. And they told me it was more than three players, and I had played it with three players so much that I had like brainwashed myself into thinking that was the only way to play the game. Wow! It's the only well, not the. It used to be the only trick-taking game I recommend with three. Oh, I know what this is. Why the bottle imp? That's right, and they're actually reprinting it this year, I think. Really? A new version of it. Yeah, I saw a new version of it being announced. This is not just a three-player game, really. It's not. It, well, maybe it's because it's three suits. Maybe here. that's what it like, that. When 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 this version came out, the the ugly one you see here um, from Stronghold <laughs> Games, yeah. Anyhow, when this one came out, he was like, "Hey, yeah, it's it's five players," and we played it with five, and he was like, "It works just as well at five. Well, you know what? No, 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 it no. does not. This, this is, is a like three player a game. great three player trick taking game, and in this, the cards are different suits and numbers, but there's no duplication. Like that twenty seven blue, there's no twenty seven red." Mm -hmm. And you play cards, you're trying to win tricks, that's a good thing. But if you, you can always win a trick by paying, playing a card that's lower than the price of the bottle, which starts at 10. If you do that, you get the bottle and you win the trick. Doesn't matter how high everyone else's cards are that played. But then you have the bottle, which means you'll lose at the end of the round. So you need someone to play a lower number than the cards you played, because that's the way the story was. You, the, the bottle gave you infinite wishes. As long as you would sell it, but you had to sell it for a lower price. And um, it works really well. You, if you win the bottle with a one, well, guess what? You're stuck with it that round. And all your points turn into negatives. I really like this game. It's fast. It's simple. 
And I think it's really stood the test of time. I think this is a true trick-taking classic. Yeah, that's a great pick, Tom. I, yeah, I salute that pick. That's really good. Yeah, and, and again, and I mean... Go ahead, say something. I'm, I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> I was just going to no, say... Good. You know what? I salute you. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I don't care anymore. <laughs> All right, number six. Uh, Z, I'm curious to hear what, see what you'll think about this one. I think it's great at three, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it works at three, I know that much. Uh, my number six pick is called Tribes of the Wind. This is a game where your two neighbors affect you uh, as you're trying to play out cards and you're hmm. trying to sequence them in a way. And uh, many of the cards will say things like, do you have more green nature cards in hand than the, your two opponents, your two neighbors? Mm -hmm. uh, and so this works fine with four players. With two players, you have to have a little variant, kind of like a dummy hand on the side. But with three, there's no waste. You know what I mean? There's no, yeah, yeah. There's no fat to trim off. That's and, a great way to put that, Chris, actually. I, I, there's no waste or fat to trim off is a great way to think about games that... Three is exactly what feels right, and more is okay, but you have, yeah, kind of wasted turns, wasted time, downtime you don't need to be, you know, you don't have anything to do on. I agree, this is a great pick at three, absolutely. Yeah, no, It's I best like at three, I just don't love it as much, the game itself, but I, yeah, I think you're right there. Yeah, the way that those card, the card, you see the card backs of the suits for the other players, and you're just always anxious, like, man, once Z plays his, his Earth, his green card, then I, then this card is going to be amazing. Yes. Or do I end up just playing it early because it'll actually set me up to make this card better? And I love that tension. The three people you are constantly yeah. always looking at each other. Tribes of the Wind. Do not be smirch Roy's good name. Uh, for any editing errors you see today, Roy is out today. <laughs> Joey is doing the, the thing, which he was picked very specifically because there's no one else in the building. <laughs> I wasn't going to throw the bus on him that way. Jeez. I wasn't going to throw the bus at Joey until he cut me off. <laughs> Jeez. All right, we'll get ready on that trigger finger, but I'm off every time. All right, here we go. My number six is a cooperative game called Paleo that has one really interesting idea in it. Uh, it's a very different cooperative game from a lot of the usual... Do a good thing, then do a bad thing kind of cooperative games. In this one, you have a deck of cards, and you'll be triggering something from the top of that deck. The back of the card gives you a clue, but you're not sure exactly what you're getting. And when you flip over the card, you can pursue the options, one of the options on there, if you have what you need. But you can also just, for most cards, say, you know what, I'm not going to do this stuff. How can I help you with your card that you can't quite make it to? You, you, you don't have the strength, you don't have the, the, you know, the tribes people, you don't have the tools, whatever. I'll just help you. I'll throw in my strength with yours. And I think that's fantastic at three. This, because you don't, again, in a two-player game, which this works, or in more, but then it's either like, there's a lot of those turns. Where, especially as you are building up to your, like, second pass through the deck, third pass through the deck, there's tons of rounds where you're flipping over and going, well, I can't do that. How can I help you? Someone says the rule book says don't play it at four your first game. Does it actually say that? I don't recall that. Um, I would appreciate that if that was true. You know what I mean? Yeah, interesting. If it does, that's that's smart because, yeah, it's it's it really wants to be a three-player game. And you also get enough. It's a deck of cards that gets split among the players. With four, you're also going to get a pretty slim little deck of cards. It's okay. not a lot of options. You don't feel like you're going through a, you know, a progression of, of events. With three, it's really good. And then you have a nice balance between helping other people turns and doing my own thing turns, or you helping me turns. Jerry, I just want to make sure you read Hannah's comment there in the live oh, chat. Oh, I see it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just internalize it. <laughs> my number six. This it, game is. It, it, Sick. Anyway, this game is a sort of a crossover with my list with last time we did this, which was, I don't yeah, know, a crossover 10 years with yourself? Ago. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a twin, perchance? <laughs> I don't remember doing the first list, so maybe. Wait, is this higher or lower than it was last time? It doesn't That's matter. That's going to determine if you're the smart <laughs> twin. 
No, it's tickets arrive. Last time I did this list. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I was going to say, guess which one, but uh, someone someone put it on the screen <laughs> before I could finish. Can we still guess? <laughs> yes, last time I was thinking to ride Africa. What do you think I did this time? <laughs> Team Asia. I don't think I would have guessed Japan. Why Japan? <laughs> now, Africa, I get. Jap Africa is very tight and, and punishing. It's so good at three. It's a good three-player map. Yeah, why this one? Ah, because Japan is my newer hotness one, I think. I guess, oh, maybe. Got it. it has oh, that... you don't have a reason. Got it. Okay, predictable. <laughs> no, I would... <laughs> no, it has thing. these little inset maps, which I like a lot. So if you're, good, if you're connecting to a neighborhood in Tokyo, you have to make the train go to Tokyo and then go in there. But there's also the one big speeding, you know, the, the high-speed train that anybody can use. And I like that. I think it's fun, and I think it works really well at three. I could just put Ticket to Ride on the list. I think Ticket to Ride is a mean, mean game at, at three, for sure. It's the meanest way to play Ticket to Ride. And yet I really like it. Really? Really? More than five? Oh, my gosh. Just The I thing about so five is, five is like... Accidental. It's, yeah, sort of like covering people with spikes and shoving six of them into a phone booth. You can't help but hurt oh, each other. Oh, sure, but yeah. five is not a great way to play the game, I think. As okay, so you're actively saying it's not that it's mean, it's just sort of like the crowd. Of the best ways to play the game, which is two, three, and four, I, I, I'll i play five and take a drive very rarely, right? Of the three, three is the meanest because you have the fewest roots. You're really cutting each other off. And I love it. I really do. I like mean ticket to ride. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Not selling with a smart twin. <laughs> Cut this man off. <laughs> My number five pick was one that I, I had a suspicion that a lot of people probably would agree with it. I looked on Board Game Geek on their like recommended player count, and it was an overwhelming amount of people who say that through the ages. Nope, sorry, through the desert is best. Of <laughs> <laughs> you just made some people so upset because they were like, yes! <laughs> no! Oh, you really goodness. ruined some people's day. I, I feel bad, genuinely. Through the desert is a gorgeous. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, is a, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can financially recover from that. <laughs> Through the Ages is fun. Two player because long. Uh, Through the Desert, though, is a great abstract game from Rainer Canizia. You're trying to kind of connect different desert features. You're trying to close off areas uh, so you can score a uh, point for every space that you've enclosed. And uh, good at many player counts, but there's an overwhelming positive consensus that three players has the most you know, butting up against each other. You can't have your green camel horde touching another player's green, so like, the spaces really get tight. But it's not, kind of like you're talking about with Ticket to Ride at five players, you're just going to kind of mess around with each other anyway. Like, it's much more intentional at three. So yeah. You run out of, because the camel's amounts, I don't think, change, do they? No, they're finite, I think. So with more... You also have fewer, like, it. you feel like, oh my gosh, this color's running out way faster than I'm ready for it to run out. Yes. And three, you don't experience that feeling. I don't mind. This is one I don't know that I agree with just because I think it's fine. I really like it at... Four. Four, two. Yeah. But I played it at three a at lot. four as well or at four and at two? Mm-hmm. Cool. I played it at four, comma, two, comma, <clears throat> two. That's a bad sentence. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... That's the Oxford comma, I think. You just stick it. That's the American comma. You need to that's one where you stick something <laughs> anywhere you feel like it. Okay. That's anyway, the Christopher Walken comma. You can play through the desert. The new version that will be on the hot games table at Dice Tower West. That's where you want to be. Where are we at? Number five. Number five. I just played on the cruise. Add two. Quit, and restarted at three. Wow. Because the person I was teaching to his his spouse came up and oh, no, like, not out of some sort of moralistic like. It's like I refuse no. to play it. He split, he split into. No, I um, <laughs> I taught Deus on the ship. And I saw you playing Deus. You, you played it more than once, didn't you? <clears throat> no, I played once. I played once. Um, 
Maybe you saw me start one game and then stop and start again. Maybe that's it. <laughs> but anyway, no, it's it's a solid two-player game. I like it at four as well. I think at three, your turns come back around a little bit faster, and the map is big enough uh, where I don't feel like I'm playing over a rinky-dink little spit of land. You know, it because it, the map size, the little hexes there, you put out a number of them based on um, how many players you're playing with, two to four. So with... Four, I'm not gaining anything. Whereas with three, I'm fighting two people, moving in on me, and the map has enough tiles where it doesn't just feel, like I, like I said, very small. Very like, oh, the board feels secondary in this game. At three players, it no longer feels that way to me. I feel like, okay, there's a reason I'm fighting over here. Oh, no, you're encroaching on me. i got to cut this person off. we got to surround this. All that stuff. Um, really like it at three. Fantastic game. One of my favorites, um, and that's a sweet number to play at. I'm glad I did. My number five. All right, I've run out of ways to say cool. No, you have not. You haven't even touched into the well of bodacious. I'm just saying I... Well of bodacious. Okay, fine. My number five is a cool game. I'm not saying that dumb word. Why? Wow. It's tubular. Nah, it's, I don't like that one either. It's gnarly. Okay, stop. It's wickedy whack! Wiggity whack, nah, whack, the whack, whack chicken. I've been, I've been banned for that one. You have been. Whack. That's true. <laughs> All right, my number five is the newest game on my list. Came out last year, was it? Yeah, it was. And I love this game at three because it's chaos. It's a little too chaotic at four, maybe, but at three, it's perfect. And that is Seas of Havoc. Oh. I am really enjoying this game. It's a deck building game and sort of. Well, I guess it's not sort of. There's deck building in the game, but it's also about moving around in a map and shooting the snot out of the other pirates. With four, you get shot like every turn. But with three, there's a little bit more <laughs> nuance to it. Not a lot more nuance. I don't want to pretend this game is some... It's high class. High class. <laughs> You're like, better than that. like, wee -ha! I mean, I can see these pirates just there. The, their, their muscles rippling in the wind. And they're going around in the ships. And it's Are a, you it's riding a, a horse? I'm, I'm very... <laughs> I'm confused. What's happening? It's a what very, is... very windy day. <laughs> Okay, they're rippling in the wind. And what are they doing, though? Are they they're steering? holding the wheel of the ship, yeah. The, but the with guy. one arm. And it's they got, they got to hold the hat on on the, with the other arm. Okay, okay. And they're very, shooting their six shooters in the air. And they yeah, they're basically yeehaw. Wild West. Six shooters. <laughs> Seas uh, of Havoc! It's crazy, man! Okay, all right. Oh, man. Why do they never come up with, like, a revolver cannon? Think how much time that would have saved. They actually... A revolver probably cannon? Probably is something like mean? that in some sort mean. of steampunk world. What's a revolver cannon? Explain it to me. It just... <laughs> cannonballs load it and shoots. I see, got it. Yeah. Like a minigun, but for cannonballs kind of thing. Right, yeah. I would love to see a Western-themed uh -huh. pirate ship. I'm sure there is such things. That'd be cool. Anyway, Seas of Havoc is crazy fun. It gives you a lot of fun things to do. It's work replacement. It's not like the game, again, is just nonsense. But I just have uh -huh. a, a blast playing it, and I think with three, it really shines. I just enjoy it a lot. I agree with you on this one, too. It's weird. You have to make adjustments and stuff. And, mm. and with more, pure chaos. I agree. This yeah. is a great three-player game. This this is a very... This is one where I will actively avoid playing, I think, at the other player counts. Ah. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Three is not actively... Like, I'll play it, but... There's that... Like you were saying, kind of like the Bottle Imp is obviously better at three. This is another one that falls into that category. Man, good pick. Nobody should ever cut you off ah. when you're... Pick one of these because it's a, it's a smart. You you're a, you're a bright man. You know I'm proud of sitting on this couch <laughs> and talking to you because there's I'm, no filibustering. I feel <laughs> <top> like. <laughs>I imagine, Tom, you're going to agree with this one. The chat was uh, guessing a game instead of the one that they were guessing earlier. I picked Couture, which I consider to be in the same family as same family of games as Nintendo. Oh! I also figured you might forget to pick it. Oh, this is a good choice. <laughs> this is so, my number 11. So this is kind of a simultaneous bidding game. There's three different cities that have... Uh, three cards each that are available for grabs. Three, three, so mm -hmm. far so good. You're seeing a trend. You have a hand of cards with different bidding values, and you have to divide them into three areas corresponding to the three cities. 
Everyone will reveal them, and then whoever has the most gets first pick of a card, whoever has second most gets second pick, and if there's a third, they get the third card. And this dynamic worked so perfectly at three. You could play with up to six. I have not dared I, play I, that high. I assume you wow. can't. I can assume <laughs> at six, the game burns up in front of players. Well, you're going to get nothing most of the time. I know, yeah. well, at least half the time, which is kind of... No, 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 that's... No, no, you're going to get nothing most of the time is exactly the sentence I said. <laughs> yeah, I know what you said. Yeah, like 58% of the time I'll say, you get nothing. Fair <laughs> enough. If you had a twin, 46% of the time. Well, he'd get something half the time. What would he get half the time? He gets it half, I get the other half. We split things evenly. You get nothing. Well, like multiplicity style? Yeah. Oh. I thought you were going to try to... Aren't you going to try to weasel a 60-40 with the twin? Maybe I am the dumber twin. Twin <laughs> weasel. New band name calling it. <laughs> anyway, Couture, I love the simultaneous bidding. Uh, someone's uh, predicted Nidavellir would be on my list, and that's... It's, this, is, this is the one that takes the spot instead. No, no, no way. Nidavellir is my five-player game. Are, Are you, you kidding? Are you crazy? No, I love Nidavellir. Oh, man. Five. You must be... Wicked Nidavir is great in the if brain I, box. I play Couture a lot more with four because, well, well I, I demoed it a lot with four. It's pretty decent, but it, I, it's way better with three. Mm. All right. Um, I wonder if my number four pick here is going to be controversial. Ooh. I know. <laughs> he said it's through the ages. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a game that I think, I think, most people prefer it at five. But I don't like it at five, maybe because I'm terribly uh, bad at it. I'm just. Uh, Is it an auction game? I'm no, it. it's not. It's Rising Sun. Oh. Rising Sun. Um, and there's a reason why I think you want to have the odd numbers of players, and that's because of the alliance. No, I agree on mechanism. that. Mechanism. So you can have somebody, somebody has to be alone. But I think at five, the. If you make an alliance of two over here and an alliance of two over there, and you're the solo player out, I feel like the benefits of being the single player don't um, overcome not sharing, you know, somebody else's resources, basically. Like, if my partner plays a card, I benefit from that card when you pick an action, whatever. And then I benefit you with my action. In a five-player game, it just does not... You don't really want to be alone. Whereas in a three-player game, I think both are tremendously powerful. Being in an alliance, basically getting two-thirds of everything is pretty good. But the options you have for being alone, the things that that team of two cannot do, that you have access to, is tremendously powerful. You can, you're a threat by yourself in a three-player game. Um, and I really like that, you know, but somebody still has to team up because everybody being alone, it would be like a prisoner's dilemma type thing. You know what I mean? I'd be like, oh, you're, you're not pairing up with anybody? Then we should. You yeah. know, nobody's doing it. Um, I really oh. like this game at three. It's my favorite player count. And I just always get creamed in this game whenever it's not that player count, where, whereas at three, I feel like I can kind of hold my own. I think you have to pick the right decks of cards to use okay. for three. But yeah, three is good. I think I prefer five, but I get it. Good. Oh, my number three. Also a C-Mine game. <coughs> number four. Really? Number four. My number four. Also a C-Mine game. Sorry, I knew the game. I just did the number wrong. Okay. Number four. Two C-Mine games coming up on Tom's list. Uh, this one, you're attacking each other and fighting the entire time, and I just think it works game. better okay. with three. Yeah, you said that already. <laughs> it's Arcadia Quest. Which is kind of the, I mean, I could put Arcadia Quest in here too, but I like the space one a little bit better. Um, you have three characters. No, it's Arcadia Quest, sorry. You have two characters, and you're running them around and just fighting each other. And there's a little bit of King of the Hill type action. You got to take out the other players. And it works at four, this and Arcadia Quest, but with three, it's really, really nice. Your turns come up fast. You, you move, shoot, do whatever, fight the aliens. And I'm Sarkane so Quest, I believe, was the first of the CMON games to introduce that idea of this whole plug and play action stuff, which they're doing with almost all their games yes, now. Yes, yeah, sure. And I'm a real big fan of that. I don't know if it's first, I just made that up. But You um, did, you so did. I really did. You just did whatever you wanted to on that one. I love that. I feel like it was their first. Like, Probably. Well, no, I'm going to go ahead and say that Blood Rage did it earlier, but you know. 
What Rage doesn't really have plug and played. You can change the monsters in the decks. Bam. You can play with or without a fifth player. Yeah, Bam. you can play. <laughs> There's so many different things you can plug or you can play. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good pick, Tom. Thanks. It's a good pick. I'm giving you a compliment. I'm accepting your compliment. Weird old twin. Thanks. <laughs> I'm going to break the trend. My number three is not a Simon game. Uh, this is a small card game from Bitewing Games. It's called Pumafiosi. This is, uh, this is one that Z, you introduced uh, to us, actually. Mm -hmm. I think this one works so well at three. It's another one of those where I wouldn't quite say playing with more players means that there's like fat to trim off. But the idea of this is you want to have the second highest card played. It's trick-taking of sorts. There's no suits, right? I throw out a 34. Tom, on his turn, throws out a uh, 29, right? Tom is kind of hoping that he's going to have the second highest card. I've never played this. Oh, I, I think it's neat. Now, Z is an interesting position where he could play a card that's higher than my higher card or lower than Tom's lower card. Or if he has a card right in between, that's such a satisfying feeling because you want to be the second highest. What that means is in three players, you want to be the middle card. And so there's no superfluous, like, I'll just throw out a one right now because it doesn't really affect anything. Every card played matters. The card that you win with, also then you have to put onto, um, there, there was like a little ladder kind of shown there of different points. So you don't want to win with cards that are too low, otherwise you're going keep, to get, keep getting bumped down and get penalties, you know, or uh, get very few points or even negative points if you're too far down that ladder. Very neat game. One of my favorite moments was I taught this to Tim, who runs Dice Tower West. I played a 34. Uh, the other guy played a 32, and Tim and I were, uh, and, and so this guy and I were like, oh, yeah, one of us is going to take it, and Tim goes, whoop, plays the 33 right in between them. He literally, like, magically tucked it right between the two cards, and he's like, yike! <laughs> well, he's a magician at one he, point. He is, I mean, and it's, it was just such a funny moment that Probably he had the, the best perfect card. magician I've ever played a game with. It's true. And I, I mean can't that disagree with you. Magician and gamer. Sorry, if it's confusing, I'm at it from every angle. My number uh, three, Puma Fiosi. Perfect at three. You reminded me of a game Cut me um, off again. <laughs> that I maybe should have put on my list that does the same thing. I think it's good at three. Um, Turn the Tide. You reminded me of Turn the Tide. I haven't tried that one. Turn I the Tide to. is a great three player Dave game. Dave and Goliath has a little bit of that too because uh, yeah. there's the highest and lowest number. So the third person kind of decides a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. The Turn the Tide is interesting too because you have a deck of cards and you do that thing. It's simultaneous is the difference. Mm. But then, once you're done, your deck of cards, you pass it to the player. Like, you play three rounds, you play every hand. It's an interesting uh, idea. I'll show it to you sometime. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. I've, I've heard good stuff about it. All right, my number three was mentioned earlier by me. <laughs> <laughs> this is San Juan. <laughs> That's how I do it, you know what I mean? If I'm not going to get a real crossover, I'll make one up. <laughs> This is like a, a, a time travel crossover. Time travel crossover, baby. San Juan is great at three. You play with more, and I have to look at more faces. You play with only two, and then the leader for the round picks a roll, the other player picks a roll, and then the leader has to pick one again, which is great. I've played tons of games of this like that. At three players, though, there's no need to twist the rules. When you are the leader for the round, you pick a roll, you do that, everybody follows, the next player picks one, the third player picks one, we reset, now you're the leader. And it's just got that great flow, same rules as, you know, same idea, I should say, as Puerto Rico or Race for the Galaxy that's kind of, you know, kind of comes from the same um, catalyst. Um, I really like San Juan. I think it's a wonderful card game. It's it, it manages to also have that feeling that Race for the Galaxy would, would give you. That is, it speeds up nicely. It's like 12 cars which you're racing to, and you do some great engine building in that half hour or so that it takes you to, 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 to build it up. Um, yeah, I really like it at three. I think it's great. It's my a super good game. Number one. three, add three, San Juan. Three at three. All right, my number three is... Uh, fetch. I don't know. A good game. 
Uh, it's a crossover. Like fetching, like, it's mm. fetching, yeah, you're right. It's a crossover with Z. For real skis? It is. Hold for on. all the same reasons you said. Hold on. Marvel United? Marvel United. <laughs> yeah! And that's really, I mean, the game almost tells you to play with three. They're mm. like, three heroes go, and then, a, and then a villain. You can play with four. And I'm like, no, nah, I can't! And the numbers don't work. Yeah. And it just actually, I don't, even when I play solo, I play with three heroes. I always I play do, with three. So two kind of, I'm like, ah, oh, one of us want to run two it people? It also kind of sucks if you are playing with four players and you're the fourth player at the table. That villain has gone twice before you get to go. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Because they flip, they, they, they go first. They do. That sucks. Yeah, this is pretty close to a three-player only game with the exception I'll also play solo as three players. But so it's the same thing, right? Yeah, I love Marvel United again. This is the game that started the plug-and-play stuff for Simon. Mm -hmm. Very true. I was there. Also, this introduced the Marvel Universe. The Marvel Cinematic Universe got their stuff from this. They decided to give them normal bodies, but whatever. Yeah, I really wish that the... They the, kept with the chibis? The MCU had used the chibis, the original <laughs> chibis. Robert Downey Jr. having that kind of uh, uh, MODOK head would be great. I know. Well, MODOK was a wink to this game. Uh, and I'm glad that they did that at least, you know what I mean? Is Modoc Modoc is in the game, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can get confused who's in and who's not. All of them are in it. Well, now they are, right? It's Modoc. <laughs> if you're not Which sure, stands for if it's a one-shot character coming soon towards you in Marvel Orthopodic. United. Orthopodorous. Huh? Orthopedic. Orthopedic. Oh, it's a pair of shoes. Modoc is a pair of shoes. Anyway, Marvel United, fantastic game for three people. Correct. What, you didn't watch that movie? The Fantastic Three yeah. is their favorite superhero. Who would you cut from the Fantastic Four? If, the, it's, the the, movie, if the, it's the movie, it's Sue Storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> it's definitely, I would cut uh, uh, Mr. Fantastic, I think. Wow. He's a jerk. He, I don't care about him being a jerk or not. I'm just saying, what's he bringing? You just don't like stretchy people? His intellect, he's the smart twin. He's, he is the smart one. I just, it's funny to me that his power and his... <clears throat> The power is that he's well. The power he's given is that he's stretchy. He's already smart. It's such a crap power. You know what I mean? No. You don't think so? I need to pick up that pen over there. It's in my hand now. Yeah, but all the other guys are like, turn invisible. I can smash things. And powerful. I would and be using it all the time. I would never. I'd be so fat. I would never get out of my chair. You'd be like chair. a mix between Mr. Fantastic <laughs> and the Blob. I need to get a trick out of the refrigerator. Fantastic like, Blob. <laughs> Could you imagine that? If the Blob <laughs> had the powers of Mr. Fantastic. You know how after you live in a house for so long, you can walk through with no lights on or anything? Is that how stretchy hand works? Like, you could reach a drink from here. Like, you'd be bad at it the first few times. Oh, no, I would be bad at it every time. It would happen. I, I, I don't understand that thing you said where you walk through your house and not bump anything. What? I hit everything, every time. With the lights on. Yeah. I leave lights on for that reason. Also, it keeps the, 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 the squirrely dirties in the, in the background. The what? what? The cockroaches. Oh. Squirrely dirties is what I heard. Squirrely dirlies, I said. Oh. oh. I heard squirrely dirties. I heard squirrely, squirrely dirties. dirties. <laughs> and that's my second bad, bad name of the day. <laughs> I'm just going to start. Here we go. Number two pick. Uh, is a game that maxes out at three players, and I think that that was the absolute correct choice when they were designing and putting this game out there. It's called Destinies. I adore this game, and it works so well Good, at three. because you put on a lot of top tens. Mm -hmm. I haven't for a while, actually. This is your Dice game. Uh, I'm Marvel United is kind of becoming your guys's. Shut up. <laughs> we're talking now. Oh, wait, no, you are. Go ahead. <laughs> Destiny is so well, good. It's one of the most thematic games that is, like... Just very high up there. It's near my top ten, I think, at this point. Uh, you are you have a secret quest, and you can choose one of two paths. And every player has two options, but one of my two paths overlaps with Tom. The other one overlaps with Z. Right. And as you're going around and discovering the story elements and, and different things that pop up, it might not relate to one of your quests, but then someone else at the table, uh, because you're reading these these uh, you know these entries and stuff out loud. I'm like, oh, interesting. There's some, there's some rubies rumored to be over in the mines in the north. I don't really care about gems or and, and Z's. They're going like, 
oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Like, you learn stuff mm -hmm. about your quest on other players' turns. It is such a phenomenal game, and I think three players How do you think is... that works, like, with a... Do I have, like, a telepathic ear? There's, there's rumors around the town, oh, okay. I guess. You know, there's rumors swirling. Oh, have, hey, have you heard about the, the, the emeralds up there? Well, no, because... <laughs> telepathic ear? <laughs> yeah, like, I can hear into your mind. <laughs> that's, his, that's his telepathy. <laughs> they, it's not the ear. But only when you say that loud. Only when you're talking. I'm a telekinetic ear. I'm sorry. What? You know what? You should be the one kicked out of the Fantastic Four. <laughs> I already was. Oh, my goodness. All right. My number two is a game that nobody gives a crap about. Um, I know Tom's played it. I don't know if you've played it. It's a game called Viceroy. I like Viceroy. You know what number it's best at? <laughs> Three! It yeah, really is. It really mm. is. Um, yeah, the main reason for that being the way in which you acquire cards in this game. You, you acquire cards, you build a little pyramid, they have actions on the cards. Love it. The kind of stuff I like. But the way you acquire cards in this game is there are four cards lined up with gem colors associated with them, you know, green, yellow, blue, red, and then you make a bid, a secret bid for the card you want. At four, you bump into each other all the time. Mm. At two, and I'm discounting the expansion, the expansion kind of fixed that, but at two, it's, you never will run into each other, very rarely. I'm like, I want that card, and you probably want something else, I don't care. Bid one, there, <laughs> that's what I got. But with three, it happens enough. You know, with three, you have to consider which thing you're going for. You have to keep a little something in the tank so when you do, you know, uh, happen to cross over with someone and they want the same thing you want, you can make a bid again. I, I think it's just fantastic at three. And again, I think with two, the, uh, the expansion helped a lot with, with two players. But... Three is the sweet spot. Like Tom said, this is a, this is a, where you want to be playing this one. I like the game a lot. I just kind of came and went. The expansion also got kickstarted. I backed that and it came and went too. This game did not get a lot of love, unfortunately. But I like it. I, I think if you enjoy these modern cards with powers sort of games, of which there are many, you should check this out. You'll probably find it for a song too because it's everywhere. My number two, you said your number two, very few people have heard of. Everyone has heard of my two. I'll make up for you. And this is the very popular Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven just works well at three. It really does. Um, the game is balanced, obviously, for the number of heroes that you have walk into a dungeon, whether it's, you know, two, three, or four. I think if you play solo, you still have to play with two characters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I like three. Three is like, it just feels like a nice, balanced party in this game. I played this with all the players. I played this many different times, and I and I think four is probably the weakest, just because there's four of you, but there's a lot of enemies, and it just gets cluttery. But three is great because sometimes with two you have this person's the tank and this person's magic, but having the third do another thing is kind of cool, whatever it might be. I don't know. I just I just like it best with three. I don't think I've ever actually played it at three. Only two and four. Yeah, I think three is my favorite way. I, I was I played it the online with Bonagor and Rod for a while with three, and I was like, man, this is like the perfect number. Just your turn. To, it's not so long between turns and everything. It just it just works really well. Mm. I see that. Okay. I. I don't know what the general consensus is on my number one pick here. This I is, hate it. I love it. Well, you you guys love the game. Oh, uh, I just I love talk about the, the player it. count, right? Um, my number one is Dune Imperium. I know a lot of people really oh. like it at the full four because you have the most the most is at, um, at stake in the battles. I suppose I really like the battles with three because a lot of times there's two kind of leaders in a battle as is. That's the biggest point of interaction in this game. And then when you're the third person, you're just kind of like, well, I'm not, I'm not really jumping into this fight. Two people are going to kind of go at it, throw everything they have at it. And I find that 
in three players, there are some rounds where the prize for winning the battle is so juicy that all three people are going, and I like that tension more than I like it with four, where you're more likely to kind of lose by one battle point or you know, yeah, lose by a tiebreaker yeah. or something. Okay, this is, I think, maybe the only one I disagree. It's your number one, too, but I think it's the only one that I disagree with. You prefer the full four? Yeah, yeah. I'm ambivalent. I don't think I felt three get, was better than four. Well, you get the reward for third place by yeah. with anything, right? Like, uh, You don't get third no, place in a no, three-player game. Third place award okay. is basically a, a pity prize, anyway. Pity and, points. And that's the thing. It's something, like, yeah. No, I, I like it with four the best, for sure. Really? It's uh, tight. It's tense. This is not a game I want to play all the time. Mm -hmm. But when I do, I want that, like... I'm drowning and everything I'm clawing for, and four gives me that feeling a little more. It, yeah, um, a bit more. I think for three, it's there's enough spots that are still open that you um, you have a, you have a card draw, and you're like, oh, I can't quite make this spot. I can still pull off some more clever yeah. things, more yeah. likely, I think. And, it, and sure, it's faster. And it's faster. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I wish that had a stronger reason than just it's faster. But for me, that battle kind of when three people are going at it in one round, it feels amazing. But if you're not invested in it, you can just kind of, you know, sit sit back and watch two people go. I like that dynamic a lot because okay. then you're set up to hopefully win, you know, a really juicy yep. prize in the next yep. round. But I could see a lot of people feeling differently. This is just my pick. I don't, I don't even. Nah, I get it. I get it. I just, yeah, I just have never really thought about it actually. Well, what are you doing later today? Washing my hair. Well, after you do that, uh -huh. you should think about this. Mm. You can think all night. Shut up and just get your pick. <laughs> I'm thinking on an excuse. Hang okay, on. Okay, all right. I'm lost. My I'm number lost. one, Tom, I hope, I think, falls into that category of, oh, yeah, absolutely best of three, no questions. I guess I... This is Biblios, my number one. Oh, I don't care. You don't care. I, I, I like really Biblios. Number one so far. I like Biblios. You guys love it. I don't ever care if I play it again. It's fine. I just don't care. No, no. I'm not saying you like the game. I'm saying at three, it's like an obvious number for this. I don't even remember how to play it. It's obvious. It's you're don't, controlling. Don't explain. It. I don't want to know. Oh, okay. Well, uh, so it's a great <laughs> game at three. Um, the. Point you're winning on these dice that you get to manipulate up or down. That the, the pips on the dice is the points. The control of that die comes from the cards you've collected. There's only five colors of dice. If you play with more than three, it's just so meager. A win is so meager. Uh, you know, it's there's nothing there to get. Um, three is the number where it's at, where you have enough competition where you're fighting for these, but then it's gonna most likely end up to, you know, come down to one player winning two of the dice, another player winning two of them, maybe even all three, but and then the third player, whatever, they suck. Um, but there's competition there, and the colors in which they ended up dominating matters, as opposed to, oh, Chris is going for blue, tank blue, because it's the only one they're going for, I can keep track of it in a four or five sure. player game. Whereas uh, you know, in a three-player game, I'm, I don't know which ones you're manipulating, which which possibly two you're going to be scoring. Um, yeah, as soon as I thought of this one, I'm like, oh, this is clearly best at three, in my opinion. So it's my number one. I, can I haven't see played it. this one. Yeah, you haven't played. No. Oh, how do you feel now? <sighs> Bewildered, like I needed to wash my hair. My number one. You thought Gloomhaven was popular. My number one's more popular right now. Right now? Yeah. What's possibly more popular than Gloomhaven Checkers? right now? Checkers? Ark Nova. Oh, my. No, I, look. I don't care. Ark Nova. Mm. <laughs> I knew that. I was prepping for this moment, so you can't, you can't hurt me any more than I've already hurt you. So Ark Nova. <laughs> this logic today is infallible, folks. <laughs> it is. I have definitely not been replaced by the stupid twin. <laughs> 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 no, I, I remember... During the first cruise, I set this up as three-player only. I wouldn't even set up the fourth player. And every time I turned my back, the fourth player had gotten set up. And people were begging me to teach a fourth player. And I was like, it's, it's too long at four. It's too long. It's too long at three also. That's, but, kinda, um, that's what I'm feeling. What's your justification for three over two? Oh, I like, the more, I like more things going on. 
there's a little bit more interaction, I think, and the cards, the card flows faster in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I just played this at three, I don't know, a month and a half ago or so, and it was just great. It was good. I was I was engaged the whole time. I really like that. Two sometimes also has the negative thing, and I don't. I almost never complain about this in a game. Okay. Where you take an action, the other person goes, and you're like, I, I haven't even thought of an next action yet. Three. Oh, interesting. Okay. No, that can happen sometimes. In a big, big thinky game like this, yeah. No, I, no, that's a fair point. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't have thought of that. I guess I just don't normally play games where I'm grinding that much. You know what I mean? But that's interesting. Well, yeah, normally I'm pretty, I'm pretty quick fast. at thinking of my turns, but sometimes Ark Nova can move. You're like, I'm doing this. and done. You know. Yeah, that's this is like the only time I've ever heard you not complain about the opposite. <laughs> That's but, interesting. But four of them is, so there's like a real fine line there. If there was a way for us to do our best 2.5 player games. Mm. Mm -hmm. Biblios. Biblios. Two and a half, play, best two and a half player games. No, okay. Don't get too caught up in the joke. Arc Nova. No, I'm thinking about how we can make this happen. Joey, bring me my tools. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be half of the half of the, the bad twin. All right. All right. So <laughs> that's our top ten um, three-player games. Quick, shouts them out in the chat, and we'll tell you why we didn't put them on the list. I just thought of one, actually, while you guys were talking about something, I was very clearly tuning you out, but I thought of one. Uh, Marvel Dagger. Oh! It's a fantastic three-player game. Yeah, you're right. Because you, you split mm. up the action tokens well enough that you still have enough to like really feel like you're accomplishing stuff. You can cover stuff. the map. You can cover the map. You can specialize different ways. Yeah. I thought about yeah. putting Zaya on the list, but I haven't played it in a little long enough for me to, like, I don't, I don't know. Whoa. Heat? No way. I want Heat with more players. Yeah, Heat more. Heat, but also any player count, because I'll throw in the bots. Ra, but no more. way. Ra's fine with three, but five is Ra. Ra's I was about to say fire again. I'm not going to. Do it. Um, root, I considered... I, don't, I usually play with four. I play a lot in the app more. Seven lately. Wonders. You're essentially playing a three-player game no matter what the player count. It's a little bit of that, but the card distribution's different. Three, I like it with more because there's more cards in the deck and I might see more stuff. Yeah. And there are some cards that aren't in the three-player right. deck. Yeah. What about Five Tribes? Do you agree on that? Five Tribes with three is fine. I preferred with... Four, I think the bidding's a little more interesting I also for turn really, order. I also really like two, where you have the double turn order thing. Sure. So actually, I, I think know, three I... might be the least interesting. Yeah. Oh, no. Vindication <laughs> is good with three. I do agree on that. I think Resurrection is good with three, but there's very little interaction in that game. To be fair, Azul is probably a good pick because that drafting, you want enough player tension. You don't want just the yeah. straight back. Yeah. I do this, therefore you'll do this, right? I play Azul a decent amount at three, and I'll bring that out, like you know, the glass stained glass with Sindra or whatever. Yeah, that'll come out at three. You know, I haven't honestly played Raw at three, but I, there's more than one person who says that three is the best player count for it because you have the most bidding chips. For I Ra thought about for which one? Raw. For Raw. Oh, Ra, it's a five player, man. It's so good at five. Somebody said uh, 51st State and, and uh, you know, the Settlers of uh, whatever one, Imperial Settlers. I <laughs> thought about it, um, and I debated it, but at two, the stuff I'm missing at two, a little bit of that interaction, I, I think I'm good to just play at two. For me, they feel like two-player games. I didn't pick uh, Wonderland's War. I saw some people say that. I didn't pick it because I think I like four players, even though it's longer. It's shorter at three, but... There's more area control fighting over the spots with four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's some games where like I almost put I almost put adrenaline on my list. I adore that game, but I realize no, I want four, right? Four or five, but preferably four because you want more of that fighting for area right. control. Right. Dominion, nah, Dominion is. I like it so much at two. <laughs> it's such a great two-player game. I really do. Yeah. What about Atlantis Rising? I want more than three, actually. Um, there's more special powers, like the you know everybody has their own unique ability. Um, I like it. I like it at more than three. I don't want to go to the high, you know, higher end because it's too much chatting when you're putting out your workers. It's an open, it's an open season kind of phase. But four is probably the sweet spot for me. Oh, villainous is good at three, but I don't think the game is. Good enough to make my top ten. Yeah, but yeah. I agree, it's really good at three. Mike makes a good point. A lot of hidden movement games, anything where it's kind of like one versus a team of two, 
Team of Two is nice, or um, I didn't put it because it's not out yet, but the um, deduction one coming out from All Play that we played live. Oh, yeah, and um, that will also be on the hot games table at Dice Tower West. The message from the stars. We're got to check out this Dice Tower West you guys are talking about. It seems like straight fire. Is there a website I should go to if I want to get tickets? DiceTowerWest.com. Also, there's a guest list. Are you on it? I bet there's some wonderful guests. Who's on it? <laughs> Sam Healy. Okay. Mark Street. Street? I should have just said Mark. You're right. That was yeah, my mistake. I'm going to try again. Mark. Street? Yes. We can edit this later, right? Keep going. Eric. Summary. Summary. <laughs> anyway. All right. That sounds good. San Marco's a good pick, but also no one's played that. Spectre Ops. <laughs> I, I just play with four so much. There's some of these that I've played with two so much that I'm sure they're great at three, but I just personally think of them as two-player games. It's people are throwing out some old school, man. Careless Magnus? That's true. That is best uh, at three. Woo! It doesn't make this list, that's all. Wow, <laughs> folks. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the, with the bench, the knowledge. All right, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for coming on board. Like, subscribe, and share. Or just whatever. Um, hey. Tight. We'll see you tomorrow morning. A, a Song of Ice and Fire Tactics. You nailed it. I did. Oh, smart twin again. Mm. Nah, this is the normal twin. Okay. There's three of us twins. You reach oh, equilibrium. Oh, jeez. Here we go. Backsliding. <laughs> I don't think you're the smart twin We're anymore. We're backsliding again. Ah! <laughs> anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vessel. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Zeger. See ya. We'll see you next time.